of people on YouTube, this is Caffeine Jedi. Sorry I haven't made a video as consistently as I was planning to, but I better make this fucking video now, or I'm just going to completely, like, not do it. So I'm combining a Quora review for episode 3, 4, and 5, and I'm going to talk about some things now, and then get to kind of a little bit more spoiler-heavy points, but I will give the warning, beep, beep, when it's time to move on. So what can I tell you? Um... I really love this show. I love Cora, and in almost a blasphematic way, <gasps> a little more than I like season one of Avatar: The Last Airbender. But uh, don't jump down my throat yet. I liked. No, I still love the first season of Avatar. I just think that it got better as it progressed, and not only that, I think that Cora is also building from a very strong show. But I am really enjoying it, though I have to say that. If they were trying to hit that 8 to 12 male demographic, they overshot that shit by like a mile. Now, if they were trying to hit more of a teenaged, both male and female demographic, going into an adult's demographic, I think they're very spot on with the show. For example, when I was watching one of the episodes, uh, there was such a moment of tension that I even fucking jumped. It might have been because I was... But I was actually legitimately, like, scared for a second. I was like, oh my god. I feel, like, really emotionally drawn into the show. I think when the creator said that this one would be darker, that they were very honest about it. That being said, uh, I do think a younger audience, of course, can still enjoy its silly moments, but it seems a little bit scarier than the previous Avatar. And also, the romance is a little more complicated and played out in a way that someone who actually has been in love might understand a little better. Or, not maybe someone who's been in love, but someone who's experiencing those moments of, like, you know, girls aren't just icky. Ah, eh, boys are stupid, you know. So let's talk about the episodes. So, spoilers, 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 spoilers. Let's start off with uh, episode three. Okay, this is one thing, I'm not quite sure how this happened, and this is actually a very sudden thing, but apparently Korra has a crush on Mako. Um, this is probably, like, my only point of contention with the show so far, because I really didn't see how this developed. Uh, from episode 2 to episode 3, it just kind of pops up. I mean, I understood that she met Mako, but Mako didn't seem immensely friendly to her at first, and she didn't seem like, you know, she was immensely friendly back. I couldn't really understand the interest popping up from there. But, like I said, my only point of contention. Either way, I'm not against the pairing. I really liked episode 3, but I would say that episode 4 is what really started to get me hooked. So, uh, episode three, Amon, you know, the leader of the Equalists, he makes his first real appearance in the show when Bolin gets himself kidnapped. Amon apparently has been taking some lessons from Tai Lee on how to block bending, but he could do it to such an extreme that he could permanently take away your bending, uh, a la Aang in the last season, in the last episode with the Fire Lord. Korra and Mako go to rescue Bolin. They have, like, a big fight and, you know, cool choreography in the martial arts as usual and I enjoyed it and it was overall a good episode. Episode 4. So Mako gets himself run over by a moped driver of this really hot rich girl named Asami and she's also got the hots for him. Um, here's where we actually see Korra begin to kind of panic a little bit because she really feels that Amon, the leader of the Equalists, is actually like a threat to her. And she really doesn't know how to handle the idea of danger. I mean, if you're the Avatar and you're super strong, you know, this is the first time you really feel like, oh, this can go really badly. Okay, basically, in the third season, we already knew that Aang had the ability to kill the Fire Lord. And it was essentially up to him whether he chose to take that path or not. In this episode, in this series, Korra seems to not know what she's facing. She seems a lot more unsure about it, and you really don't know how far Amon can go. That being said, like, yeah, you really see Korra feeling threatened about it all. And there was one scene actually in this where uh, basically Korra tries to, you know, make herself feel better. She joins like this task force to try and find the Equalist and try to find Amon. And uh, she basically calls Amon out saying, oh, come and get me. If you're man enough, you're gonna meet me here at this time. And, um, and right when you think Amon isn't gonna come, fucking snatches her up and like this moment where Amon and her like face each other for the first time I actually felt like my heart go like up I really felt the tension I was like oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god and then he like totally just like knocks her unconscious like super hard like I was like ow like I really felt the pain there I was like damn that wasn't like a little bit of like oh water bend smack no it was like like it like she blacks out and basically she was like like literally like crying in fear that's how bad it fucking was with her 
And I don't know if it's because she's a female character and I'm female and, like, you know, I can, like, connect with her a lot better. But, um, no, I think other people can, too. Uh, ma male audience, what do you think? Like, can you also connect with Cora really easily? Like, did you feel, like, her fear? Because I really, like, felt it. I was like, oh, my God. Scary shit. So let's move on to episode five. The romance episode. So let the love triangles begin. Mako is dating Asami, you know, the cute rich girl. Uh, unlike this usual stereotype of the cute rich girl, Asami seems very nice and sweet and likable, and she's even nice to Korra. So it's not like your typical, oh, I'm such a bitch, it's so easy to hate me, and so you really want the hot guy just to leave this girl for me, you know. I actually really like the way the show is showing a different side of love, which is sometimes you have two really nice options. It's not usually just stuck up rich bitch and the nice girl next door. Also, Bolin is getting more of a deeper crush on Korra. And Korra basically gets shot down by Mako. She puts her feelings out towards him, gets shot down. So there comes Bolin to sweep her off her feet and all the crazy hijinks ensue. As someone who's been in some crazy romance situations, I'm very glad that they're taking a very like realistic approach to it, to the way how like teenage romance really is or real romance can be. It's never as simple as you might think. We also get to meet the douchey rival team and, you know, the guy in charge of them. I know this is going to sound silly, but there is um, a moment where one of the characters, I forget his name, the leader of, like, the douchey rival team, uh, he's basically going in and he's fucking with uh, the fire ferrets and he's like, smells like loser. Essentially, like, they, like, go on this back and forth banter. We'll see who really wins, da 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 da. The guy goes, turns around and he goes, oh yeah, I'm pissing in my pants. Now this, I know it sounds so stupid, but I swear, just saying this one thing really changes the entire tone of the show. For example, there's a difference between peeing and pissing. Children pee, old drunk men piss. I never say I'm going to go take a piss. It sounds vulgar just for me to say it. I mean, I'm sure that I do. But usually not. I mean, I try not to. Um, so, you know, it, I, I don't know, in a weird way, it feels like it's taking um, a little bit more of a serious tone there. I'm watching the show and I'm feeling like the show is just up to par to like other primetime shows that you'd watch. That being said, it's not like serious like the fucking wire or anything like that shit. You know? I think it's definitely taking a different turn. I think that the creators were given a lot more leeway in this one and you could really see it. That being said, um, I would say uh, Avatar The Last Airbender is still one of my favorite shows, if not my favorite show ever, but Korra is giving it the run for its money. See you guys.